Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the No Zone. Now, this is the place where we love to have fun while we learn. I am Ch Ch Charlie. And I am Marara. Ah! Ooh, and I am Janet. And for you at home, we are so excited that you're joining us today because we have so much lined up today. Now, we hope that you have a pen and a paper ready because we have a lot of fun with numbers coming up. That's right, and what play with teacher Pendo. And of course, we will get creative on Creative Zone. And do not forget the number game. That's right. Clearly, we have so much lined up. So first of all, let's go to the chill out zone and say a big hello to our studio guests. Come on. Uh, but, uh... Hello, everyone. Hello! Now, before we get too far, why don't we say a big hello to everyone who's watching us at home? Hello! Wait, I'm here too. Say hello to me. Hello, Marara! Oh, thank you very much. We are glad to meet you and so glad that you came to help us with today's show. And to start off with the fun, who can tell us what today's show is all about? It's about home. Home and activities in the home. Excellent. Now, what are the buzzwords? Hot. Cold. Heavy. Firewood. That's right. Now, all these words are related to things around the home. Now, for you watching us at home, I hope that you wrote down those buzzwords. Listen out for them throughout our show today and in our next fun adventure. So right now, let's find our way in the next adventure at the Playhouse. It's so quiet. I think we should play a game that includes everyone. Maybe we could play hide and seek. Nah, that's not fun. Especially since Luigi is not here. All right then, let's play house. That sounds like a great idea. Let us play house. We can act like a big family. Okay, let's us play house. Who will be the mommy? I can be the mommy. No, you can't. Why not? I think I can be a good mommy. I think I can make a better mommy. What do you think, Promise? Uh, anyone can be the mommy. I'll be the one who sells vegetables, like Mama Mboga. I don't mind. I'll be the son. So I'll be the daddy. I'll be the daddy. Theo, you can't be the daddy. You're not big enough. Yeah, we can wait for Luigi, but for now, let us decide who will be the mommy. Okay, let's make this a competition. Yeah, and whoever gets the most things will be the mommy. That sounds like a great idea. I agree. Let's go and get the things and see who wins. So, yesterday was market day and there are a lot of unsold vegetables. Zach, do you want to help me collect some to bring to the playhouse? Yes, and you can see if we can find Luigi to come and play daddy. First, Theo. It's nothing. I just want to be left alone. Whoa, I understand that. But sometimes it helps if you talk about the problem. And I am a very good listener. I can help you. Can you make me bigger? And why would you want to be bigger? Because everyone wants to play house. And you want it to be the house? No, we are playing house. But everyone says I'm too small to be the daddy. I just wish I knew what a good daddy was like. Oh my. Well, a good daddy is someone who's in control and can make the family strong. I can't do that on my own. I am too little. Ha 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 ha! 
You just think you're too little, but you can do it. Anything is possible if you believe in yourself. How? Well, you are a smart boy. You're confident and brave, and that means you can make a good daddy. All you have to do is just believe in yourself. What I can do is help you look like a good daddy. Then you can show everyone else how good you are. I am not sure. Believe me. I can dress you like a good daddy, but you have to believe you can be a good daddy. What else does a good family need? Sometimes you have a mommy and a daddy. Sometimes only a mommy or only a daddy. But a good family is one that respects each other, loves each other, and always works to make each other better. So if you think you can do that for your friends, then you can make a good daddy. I guess. No, 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 no. You have to know. I know. I know I can. That's right. Now, let's get started. Aha! Let's try this on. This should be enough for the game. Yes, and Maria and Daphne should have brought the rest. Look at all the things you've got. Told you I was the best, Mommy. I brought a new bucket and a clothesline. We can tie it outside the playhouse and hang all the wet clothes. You're taking this very seriously. It may be a game, but I'm the best, Mommy. Did Theo not go to get things to playhouse? I think he's in the playhouse. Do you think you are too hard on him? Maybe if you gave him a chance, he'll be a good daddy. No, Theo is too small. He can be the brother. And Marie, you're back. I brought things to be the mummy. I collected some firewood and brought some pots. That looks heavy. It's heavy, but I have enough to win. We'll see. What is hot and cold and is something we drink? Water. What has happened to the playhouse? I rearranged the playhouse so that it was nicer for all of us. What do you think? I like it. So do I. It looks like home. And even I closed that place in the wall where it used to get wet when it rained. Now the playhouse is rainproof. That's a good job, Theo. You even moved some of the heavy things all by yourself. I think we should decide who's the mommy now. I collected firewood and brought some pots. And I brought a clothesline and a new bucket. What do you think, Mr. Zippo? If I'm playing this game, I am the grandfather of the house. The decision will not be mine. I think I know how we can settle this. Why don't we let Anne Marie be the mommy today and then Daphne can be the mommy tomorrow? This means it will be fair for everyone. Wonderful. And I think I know who should be the daddy. Me too. I think Theo should be the daddy. You want me to be the daddy? That's a great idea. You solve that problem easily. And you fix the playhouse. You should be the daddy. I think so too. Plus, you look like the daddy in your sweater and tie. Okay. Then let me help her put the clothes line outside. Since I'm the mommy, I'll cook the food. Daphne, you can wash the clothes and hang them on the line outside. <laughs> and I will be the grandfather. I'll wait for dinner. Yum, yum, yum. From Playhouse, this is Queasy Quiz. What are the qualities needed to play the daddy? Well, you are a smart boy. You're confident and brave. And that means you can make a good daddy. All you have to do is just believe in yourself. Who played the mommy in the family? Why don't we let Anne Marie be the mommy today and then Daphne can be the mommy tomorrow? This means it will be fair for everyone. Wonderful. Which family role did Mr. Zippo play? If I'm playing this game, I am the grandfather of the house. 
That was a really sweet story, but I especially liked how Mr. Zippo helped Theo. Yeah, well, so did I. Now, what about you? Did you all enjoy the story? Yes! yes! Excellent. And for you watching us at home, we hope that you enjoyed the story as well. We also hope that you enjoyed Quizzy's quiz and that you had fun while answering all of his questions. Right now, it's time for us to go to the learning zone and find out what wordplay Teacher Pendo has lined up for us. It's time for... Hello everyone. Hello teacher. Welcome to Cool Words. I hope you've all had a lovely time since our last lesson. Oh, teacher Pendo. Yes, Marara. I did have a good time and I looked around the house keenly. There were lots of activities to do at home. Good, Marara. You've actually reminded us of our assignment for last week. Now, how many of you managed to write down the many items found in our homes and what the items are used for? And how did you get on at home? Well, in our last lesson, we looked at equipment found in our homes and what they are used for. Today, we shall look at ways of describing objects used at home. Ooh, ooh, teacher Pendo. Yes, Marara. Now, Teacher Pendo, I don't really understand what happens. No matter how many times you clean the house, it still gets dirty. And I hate wet floors. Well, Marara, it's really good to clean the house regularly. Now, can somebody tell me the two words Marara has used to describe the house? Yes, Dorcas? He has used the word dirty. Dirty. Very good. He used the word dirty. Someone else, give me another word. Yes, David? He, he has used the word wet. Wet. He used the word wet to describe the floor. Okay, now these two words are describing words. We refer to them as adjectives. Now, can we all read this word out loud together? Adjectives. That's great. Now, can someone think of other adjective words that describe something? Yes, Josphat? Big. Very good. Describing the size is an adjective. Someone else? Yes, Brian? Red. Red, that's right. Words that describe colors are adjectives. Anything ooh, ooh, else? Chupendo, chupendo. Yes, Marara. Happy. I'm happy to be in the classroom with you. Ah, that's great, Marara. Thank you. So adjectives can also describe moods. Now, there are many adjectives that we can use to describe objects within our home. I'd like you to tell me some of these objectives and the objects they describe. So who would like to go first? Yes, Dorcas? A sharp knife. Uh -huh, great. Now the word sharp is a good word to describe a knife and that means we should really be careful when using a knife. Someone else? Yes, David? A, a heavy cooking pot. Mm -hmm, super. You're really good at this. Someone else? Ooh, did you bend yes, Marara? Hot fire. Mm -hmm, very good. Now note the word hot means that it can burn. So you need to be very careful when handling fire as well. Okay, so someone else? Yes, just what? Cold water. Aha, very good. Someone else? Yes, Brian? New plates. New plates, great. And finally? Yes, Marara? Dry firewood. Aha, well done. And well done, all of you. I really liked your descriptions. And what adjectives can you think of at home? Well, make sure you join us later on for more fun with words. But right now, let's catch up with a happy colorful man. Can you all guess who I mean from the adjectives I've used? Ah, Teacher Pendo. Yes, Marara. You must mean Maspidi. I do. And it's time for Out There. What's your favorite food? Did you know that different people around the world have different types of foods that are considered as their main food? Personally, I love my chapati. But hold on. Do you know how to make delicious chapati? Well, I have a big surprise for you. But first, I'm told my hands have to be super clean. We are joining my friend Tabitha. Today, she is preparing a very special meal for her friends here. Here we go. Hey, look. 
we are making some chapati and later on some vegetable stew as well. Chapati is very common not just in Kenya but other countries. Although it goes by different names in different places, it is flat bread prepared using wheat flour. Here we go! But first, we will need some flour, a bowl and some lukewarm water, meaning not so hot or too cold. To make our chapati tasty, some salt and some sugar too. Then, we add the water and mix thoroughly to form something we call the dough. We then knead it and if it is too sticky, we add a little more flour. Then, we add oil to the dough and continue kneading until the oil is evenly spread and the dough does not stick to the hands. Tabitha says it's now time to make some little balls from our dough. Look, this is an interesting process. The tray should not be sticky too, otherwise your balls would get stuck. When cooking, it is important to observe cleanliness, like keeping the working surfaces clean and even washing your hands. This is going to be so much fun! Taking one bowl of dough at a time, we are going to roll them using a rolling pin to a circular shape about the size of a dinner plate. Using a spoon, you drip oil around the dough and spread evenly. Notice how Tabitha is taking the edges and folding to form a coil. She tells me, that this is one way of making sure that our chapati will be soft, flexible and juicy. Ooh, let me give it a try. This is so hard. Is this going to be brown? Well, what shape is this? The map of Africa? Ooh. And just like me, a lot of people find it so difficult to cook chapati. But Tabitha says that it is very easy. All that one needs is enough practice. Well, as she is doing this, let's get the cooking fire ready. As this gets ready, Let's find out how my other friend Mary is doing in a process of preparing the stew. But first, let's wash our hands. Look! <laughs> Yummy! Well, the jiko is ready. The pan is too. Let the cooking begin. While your frying pan is warming up, you take one bowl of dough and spread it into a circular shape. When the frying pan is hot enough, you transfer the rolled out dough onto it. Wait until the lower side just starts to dry up. After another two or three minutes, turn it over and cook the other side. In the meantime, take another bowl of dough and roll out just like the first one. Tabitha tells me, if one is fast enough, one can roll a chapati while also minding the one in the pan. She is so fast! <laughs> By using a spoon, one should spread oil evenly onto the chapati, then turn over and do the same to the other side. The oil is necessary not only for nutritional purposes, 
but also to make the chapati soft. If the pan is not too hot, the lower side should turn golden brown after one and a half or two minutes. Oh, oh, our chapati is burning. Let's reduce the heat. If they brown too fast or show signs of burning without getting ready, reduce the heat. The ready chapati should feel soft and have lightly brown patches like this one here. And here are the ready chapatis. Woo! <laughs> mm. Evidently, I'm not the only one who loves Tabitha's chapatis. Mmm! Wow! Mmm! Thank you so much, Tabitha, for the cooking lesson. <laughs> Woo! Until next time, good people. Goodbye. See you soon. Goodbye. Thank you, my speedy, for taking us on another fantastic adventure. You know what, Shirley? I actually love my speedy's uh, trips out there because he shows us a lot of things that we would actually not see without his help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think everyone is so nice to him because he's always happy. And I think that is a lesson to everyone. True, Maya. I mean, that's what my speedy teaches us every day, that a smile is a great thing. And speaking of great things, it's time for our first game. Well then, let's get ready and get set and go straight into our number game. Welcome to Marara's shopping list. That's right. Now, I've been given a shopping list by my mom, but I'm not sure if I have the right amount of things. Mara, you know we are always going to help you. Of course we're going to help you, Marara. Now, the shopping list is very simple. There are four items on the list. Now, you will help Marara by getting more items from the market and then putting them into Marara's basket. Now, this time, we are going to be dealing with bags. So each item has been closed into a bag so that you know what you're getting. Remember, after your turn, you have to go back to the team, tag the next team member so that they can help you get the next item from the market. But you have to make sure you do this before the market closes. Now, when you help me get my shopping list right, you do not go home empty-handed. You get these fabulous books to take back to your school. And of course, we have a very special prize for each one of you. Now, let's get started. Are you ready? Yeah! Ooh, I know that sound. It means that the market is about to close. Team leader, Dorcas, off you go. All right, the first item on the list is for banana bags. Okay, so how many do I have? One, two. How many more do I need to make four? Two banana. Two. Go, 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 go to the market. Go, 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 go to the market. Go. That's it. Yeah. Tag the next, the next team, team member. Tag the next team member. Go. All right. The second item on the list is two mango bags. All right. Two mango bags. How many do I have? One. How many more do I need? One. Oh, get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. That's one. it. That's one. it. That's one. it. There you go. Well done. Tag the next team member. Tag right. the next team member. All right. The third item is six orange bags. All right. How many orange bags do I have? One, two, three. How many more do I need to make six? Three. Three, go, 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 That's it, come on, come on, three, 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 three. That's it, that's it, that's it. Pack the pasta, pack the pasta, all right, yeah. All right, the final team member. Mara needs eight passion fruit bags. All right, how many do I have? One, two. How many more do I need to make eight? Five. Five, okay, go to the market. Okay, all right, go get them. There you are, those are three, just go. Come on, go, 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 Let's see how they did. Well done, number team. Now, let's get straight into those sums. Now, the first item on the list was four banana bags. Marara already had two banana bags in his basket. So how many did you have to add to get four? Two. 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 Are you sure? Yes. All right. Marara, how many bags did they bring you? Oh, one, two, oh, yeah, that's two. two. That is the correct answer. Let's give them a round of applause. Woo! Brilliant start, team. Now, 
Each banana bag has four bananas in it, which means that if you have four banana bags, that's four, plus four, plus four, plus four, you have a total of 16 bananas in Marara's basket. So, well done team. Let's move on to the second sum. Now the second one, Marara needed two mango bags in his basket. Now he only had one. How many more would you have to add for him to get two? One. One, are you sure? Yes. How many bags did they bring you Marara? Okay, let's see, and that's one. They only brought wow. one, and that one is the correct answer. Let's give them a round of applause. Well done, team. Now, if you add the one bag, you have the two bags of mangoes. Now, each mango bag has three mangoes in it, which means three plus three. There are now six mangoes in total in Marara's basket. Well done, team. Now, the third sum. Marara needed six bags of oranges in his basket. He only managed to get three. So how many would you have to add to get six? Three. 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 Are you sure? Yes. All right, Marara, how many bags did they bring you? Oh, let's see. That's one, two, three. Well done, team. You are correct. <laughs> By adding the three bags, Marara now has six bags bags of oranges in his basket. Now, each bag of oranges has two oranges in it, which means two plus two plus two plus two plus two plus two, plus two comes out to 12 oranges in total. You're doing very well, number team. Let's get to the final sum. Marara needed eight bags of passion fruit in his basket. He only managed to get two by himself. How many would you have to add for it to be eight? Six. Six. Are you sure? Yes. yes. Oh, all right. Now, Marara, how many bags did they bring you? Okay, let's count together. One, two, three, four, five. Wait, I can't find the sixth one. Oh no, team, you may have missed that last one, but you were right. You needed to add six more bags for it to be eight bags of passion fruit in Marara's basket. Now, just to complete it, each bag of passion fruit has five passion fruits in it. So, five plus five plus five plus five plus five, plus five, plus five, plus five, comes to a total of 40 passion fruit in Marara's basket. But nonetheless, you got three of the sums correct, so let's give them a round of applause. All right, Tim, I can see you guys discussing about the last sum. Do not worry, because you got three sums correct. But unfortunately, you do not get to take this fabulous textbooks back to your school. But Mara has something for you. That's right. I have a special prize for each one of you just for taking part. Number team, come and get your prizes. Go on up. Get your prizes. Now, if you enjoyed playing Marara's shopping list with us, make sure that you join us a little bit later for more number fun with Teacher Pendo on Hot Numbers. Now, that was really, really close. Yes, it was. I mean, you could actually see them just struggling with the sums, but they did good. No, I think they did really yeah. well. I mean, three out of four is 75%. Yeah, two, not bad. But right now, we have to move on to something else. Let's go and find out what our friend Dunia is showing us today. It's our world. everyone and welcome to our world with me, Dunia. I am really looking forward to today because we are going to learn how to plant our own tomatoes. And I love tomatoes. 
Planting is a very useful skill because it lets us grow our own food. First thing to do is to find an area where you can plant that has some sunshine and soft soil to dig. You then need to prepare the land for your nursery. And a nursery is an area of young plants. You need to dig up the area you want to plant. This is usually done using a pitchfork which can be very dangerous as it is heavy and sharp. So ask an adult to help you. Now sprinkle some compost over your planting area and mix it in with the soil. The next step is to raise your planting area which we call a bed. Try and make the bed about 7 inches higher than the surrounding ground like Vincent here is demonstrating. Then level it and remove any last weeds or rocks. Okay, now the bed is ready for planting. Before putting any seeds into the ground, you must make some lines about 2 inches deep into the top of the bed. Make sure there is space between the lines so the seeds have room to grow. It should look something like this. Then, get your tomato seed, pour them into your hand and carefully place them down the lines. Again, leaving space between them. We use some dried grass to cover over the top of the bed to protect the seeds. So, the last but very important step is we need to give the seeds some water so they will start to grow. Vincent is also mixing in some chemicals called insecticide. This is to stop the seeds being eaten by insects. Ask an adult to help you with this as these chemicals can be very dangerous. Don't get any on your skin or in your mouth. For Vincent's tomatoes, he is mixing only 2 grams of Actara insecticide with 5 liters of water. This is mixed together and then poured into a watering can so it is easy to spread the liquid evenly over the seeds. This bed with seeds is now called a nursery. If watered regularly, after 28 days, the seedlings will have grown into young plants. Now they need to be carefully dug up and replanted into a bigger area. You need to prepare the land just as before. Make holes 2 feet apart and about 3 inches deep. Then plant your young plants into the holes and support them with soil. And remember to water them regularly. Before you know it, you will have your own fresh, delicious tomatoes on your doorstep. Yummy! So I am going to try and plant my own tomato nursery. So I must remember to prepare the soil, dig some lines, spread out the seed, cover them with grass, and then water them regularly. I hope you are inspired to start planting. Give it a go or find a farmer near you who you can help and learn from. See ya! I really enjoyed our world. Yes, so did I. And we hope that you enjoyed it as well. You see, we at the No Zone love the environment, right? Right! Right now though, we have to go on a short break. Oh yes, and we still have more number fun and wordplay with Teacher Pendo. An animated story and spell it. All that and more coming back right here on the No Zone. Don't be long. Welcome 
back to the Nozone. We are really glad you're here with us today. Are you excited to be here? Yes! That's great to hear. Now, all of today's buzzwords are about home and activities in the home. So, do you remember your buzzwords? Yes! Great, then let's remind everybody what the buzzwords are. Hot. Cold. Heavy. Firewood. Excellent. Now for you watching us at home, look out for these buzzwords throughout our adventures today. I know what that sound means. It's time for us to join Chapendo for more number fun in... Hello everyone. Hello teacher Bella. Welcome to Hot Numbers. It's really nice to have you here with us. Now we have been doing quite a lot of work in the last couple of weeks and I'm sure if you've all been doing your homework, you must now be very good in adding and subtracting. Mm, teacher Pendo. Yes, Mara. I've done all the work you asked us to do. But it's not so much fun working alone. Well, sometimes you just have to work alone so that the teacher can know whether you have understood or not. And if you have not understood, then the teacher will help you. Well, okay, Teacher Pendo. So, what are we doing today? Well, today we are going to look at multiplication. Multiplication? Yes. We will look at multiplication as repeated addition. Now, don't worry, Marara, it's very easy to understand. Now, on the table here, I have three sets of carrots. Now, in each set, I have two carrots. Now, if I asked you how many carrots I have, I would write it out like this. So, I would write it as two plus two plus two, which gives us six. Oh, Tisha Pendo, I see now. So that's why you're calling it repeated addition. That's right, Marara. Now, because we have three groups of two, we could also use the multiplication sign, which looks like this. So there is our multiplication sign. So that means then that our sum becomes three multiplied by two, which gives us six. Uh, well, Teacher Pendo? Yes, Marara. Can you please explain again? Okay, now we can see that there are three groups of two. So we get the three multiplied by the two, which gives us six. Do you all understand? Yes! Well, uh, I, I think so, Teacher Pendo. Okay, now let's try some more examples. Now on the table here, there are some different groups of sticks. Now I'd like you to tell me how many sticks there are in total by counting the bundles. Okay, so the first one, four bundles of two sticks. Four bundles of two sticks. So who's going to do that for us, Joy Masi? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Mm-hmm. Which means? 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 gives us 8. Very good. So 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 gives us 8, which can also be written as 4 multiplied by 2, which gives us 8. Now, there are three bundles of three sticks. Esther, count for us three bundles of three sticks. 1, 2, 3, 4. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 3 plus 3 plus 3 give us 9. Excellent. So 3 plus 3 plus 3 gives us 9, which can also be written as 3 multiplied by 3, which gives us 9. Okay. Now, Sean has three bundles of four sticks. Count for us that, Sean. 1, 2, 3, 4. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 4 plus 4 plus 4 gives us 12. Mm -hmm, very good. So there are 12 sticks. Okay, now we can also write that as 4 multiplied by 3, which gives us 12. All right. And the last one, we have 
two bundles of five sticks. How many sticks do we have, Sandra? Count for us. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Five plus five gives us ten. Very good. So five plus five gives us ten. Okay, and we can also write that as two multiplied by five, which gives us ten. Well done, everyone. Okay. Now on the board, I have some pencils drawn. Now using the paper and pen you have in front of you, I'd like you to write down the repeated sums as multiplications. Now why don't you join in at home? So let's start writing. So Joy Marcy, do for us the first one. Esther, do for us the second one. Sean, tackle this third one. And Sandra, tackle this fourth one for us. And Marara, do the last sum for us. We are looking at multiplication as a repeated addition. Okay, so the first one, Joy Massey. What's our sum like? Three times two give us six. Mm -hmm. Three plus three give us six. Mm -hmm. So we say three plus three gives us six, which can also be written as three multiplied by two. Very good. Moving on to this next sum, Esther. Two plus two plus two plus two give us eight. Mm -hmm. Very good. Two plus two plus two plus two gives us eight. We can also write this as two multiplied by four, which gives us eight. Well done. Moving on to the third one, Sean. 4 plus 4 plus 4 gives us 12. Mm -hmm, very good. 4 plus 4 plus 4 gives us 12. We can also write this as 4 multiplied by 3, which gives us 12. Excellent. What about this one, Sandra? 5 plus 5 gives us 10. Mm -hmm, excellent. 5 plus 5 gives us 10. We can also write this as 5 multiplied by 2, which gives us 10. Excellent. And how about the last one, Marara? 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 is equals to 5. Mm -hmm. Very good. And we can also write this as 5 multiplied by 1, which gives us 5. Fantastic work, everyone. And that is what we call multiplication as repeated addition. Oh, well, Chapendo. Yes. I liked writing the repeated sums. That's good to know, Marara. Unfortunately, our time is up for today, but I hope to see you next time for more fun with numbers. Well, these lessons are too short. <laughs> Marara, they may be short, but we always learn something new. Well, it's now time to see how creative we can be. That's right. It's time for Creative Zone. Hello everyone and welcome to Creative Zone. Now we've been learning about different types of poetry, uh, rhyming poetry, free verse, but we want to know if there's any other forms of poetry out there. So we've brought an expert. I'm Wende. Hi Charlie. So um, we've learned about rhyming poetry, about free verse. What other kinds of poetry are you going to be teaching us about today? Well today we're going to learn about something that I love called limerick. Oh sweet, it even sounds lyrical, it's a limerick. All right, so I am going to go and find my pencil and my paper. I'm going to leave you in Wenda's capable hands. Have fun. All right, friends, there is one form of poetry that I really love. This is a limerick. This kind of poem is a five line poem and its rhyme follows the pattern of A, A, B, B, A, where the first two lines A rhyme, then the third and fourth lines B rhyme together and the last line rhymes with the first A line. Let's have a go. We need a word from our list of buzzwords. Hot, cold, firewood, heavy, new. I'm going to choose cold. From that, let's see if we can make a silly verse with cold. That means we need words that rhyme, like old, fold, gold, or bold. You see, that was easy. I wonder what I can do with those words. Let me try this. 
The explorer's adventure to the mountain was bold. But when he got to the top, it was very cold. Those two lines rhyme perfectly. Now in A limerick, the two sentences, the B lines, must also rhyme, but in a different way. For example, I want to use the word hot. So what rhymes with hot? Words like clot, or shot, or spot, or slot. Now let us do the next two lines of the, of the limerick. So he looked for a spot, which he thought looked shiny hot. Wow, that was easy. Now we have to close it with a word that rhymes with cold. So we end on a word that rhymes with the first two A sentences, like, but instead he found a glittering pot of gold. Now listen to the complete limerick. The explorer's adventure to the mountain was bold, but when he got to the top, it was very cold. So he looked for a spot, which he thought looked shiny hot, but instead he found a glittering pot of gold. Now you try writing a simple poem like that. I mean, you simple sentences, simple words. A limerick is really fun, and as long as you're having fun, then it's okay. And if you want to share, send your poems to us here at No Zone, Poetry Competition, Media Company, PO Box 215 Karen, Nairobi. And the best poems will be read on the show during the holidays. So come on and send them in. That is all from me today. Sadly, I have to go, but you can go and hang out with Janet, Charlie, and Marara in the chill out zone. Bye. You know, I really, really enjoy Creative Zone. I mean, whatever they come up with is really fun and exciting, and I can't wait to see what they come up with next week. That's true, Charlie. For now, let's get set, get ready, and get our brains running for the biggest spelling challenge in Africa. That's right. There are four contestants, and that is Joy Marcy, Esther, Sean, and Sandra. Now, for you at home, see if you can keep up with them. It's time for Spell It. Animal, animal. chapter, building, narrow, building. respect, Meter. respect. Deep. deep, vegetable, work, work. 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 Welcome to Spell It. Now this is the place where we play with our words and our letters. Sandra, Esther, Joy Mercy, and Sean. You are about to step out of the shadows and into the spotlight to compete for the title of today's Nozone Spelling Champion. Now, the winner of today's competition will win their school, a Nozone Dictionary, and a very special prize for themselves. Now, each contestant has just 25 seconds to spell correctly as many words as they can. If you would like a word repeated, simply say repeat and the word will be repeated for you. Are the rules clear? Yes. Now all of today's words will be coming from our topic of... Home and activities in the home. All right, let's get into our first competition. Sandra, are you ready? Yes. Come on down and step into the spotlight. Sandra, your 25 seconds start now. Pot. H-O-T. Tin. T-E-N. Heavy. H H E A R Y Door Repeat Door D O O R Towels Repeat Towels T O W E Well done very well, well done well done good great All right Esther it's your turn now come on down and step in the spotlight Esther, your 25 seconds starts now. Dry. D-R-Y. Hot. H-O-T. Dirty. D-I-R-T-Y. Wash. W-A-S-H. Clothes. C-R-C-L-O-T-H-E-S. Line. 
Father. Line. L I N E. Sister. S I C T E R. Right. Good job, good job. Well done, Esther. Joy Mercy, it's your turn now. Come on down and step in the spotlight. Joy Mercy, your 25 seconds starts now. Toy. T O I. New. N E W. Clean. C L E A N. Step. C T E P. Bucket. B U C K E T. Fire. F I R E. Mother. M O T H E R. Watch. Right. Joy Mercy, very well done. Well done, Joy Mercy. And finally, Sean, it's your turn now. Come on down, step in the spotlight. Sean, your 25 seconds starts now. Big. B I G. Wet. W E T. Pet. P E T. Comb. C O M B. Spoon. F P O O N. Cold. C O L D. Father. All right, well very well done, Sean. Well done. Well done, all of you. Charlie, mm -hmm. please reveal the scores. Sandra, I'll start with you. Although you spelt the word hot, H-O-T, correctly, the word that Janet had asked for was pot, P-O-T. And you ran out of time, sadly, spelling the word towels. Nonetheless, you spelt one word correctly. Let's give a round of applause. Well done, Sandra. Esther, you misspelled the word clothes. Nonetheless, you spelled five words correctly. Let's give a round of applause. Well done. Joy Mercy, although you misspelled the word step, you spelled six words correctly. And finally, Sean, you spelt six words correctly. Which means that today we have two winners. So, uh, Joy Mercy and Sean, you are the winners of today's No Zone Spelling Competition with six words spelled correctly. Both of you, step forward. Congratulations, Joy Mercy. Sean. Congratulations. Now the both of you are today's No Zone Spelling Champions. Show everyone at home your prize. A big round of applause. Well, congratulations. Congratulations to the both of you. And you are all winners because this is the No Zone because you have spelled so many words correctly. And for that, please, come on up and take your storybooks. Come, come, come. <laughs> Wow, now that was a wonderful round of Spell It, and I think we need to relax with something a bit lighter. Uh, yes, and lucky for us, Chapendo is waiting for us so that she can show us how much fun we can have with words on Cool Words. Welcome back to Cool Words. Now on the board, I have a list of describing words that you could use to describe objects in the home. Now I'd like us to make sentences using these words. Remember, your sentences must have something to do with an activity that takes place in the home. Now let me give you an example. I'll use the word wet. It is not safe to walk on a wet floor. Now who wants to go next to use the word cold? Yes, Dorcas? It is usually cold in the morning. Very good. Someone else to use the word dry? Yes, David? The firewood was very dry. Aha, uh -huh, very good. How about the word new? Oh, Teacher Pendo. Yes, Marara. We have a new table in our house. Oh, lucky you. A new table. Very good. And what about heavy? Yes, just fat. The water bucket was too heavy for me to carry. Oh dear, buckets of water can be very heavy. All right, and the word dirty? Yes, Brian? I never walk inside the house in, in, in my dirty shoes. 
that's very sensible excellent work everyone your choice of sentences are very creative and hopefully you can all practice using some more describing words please join us next time for more cool words right now though it's time for something that's going to make us all very happy that's right it's time for story zone This is the story of the trip to India. Enjoy. Dawn broke out in the sky and within the thick rainforest. A songbird got out from her nest and chirped. Hello morning sun, wake up everyone, it's time to come out, work and play. Her song traveled in every direction far and wide, waking all the animals up. One by one, they stretched and they yawned. But of all the animals in the forest, none was as happy as baby elephant Anita, for she had all along been waiting for this day to arrive. Anita flapped her ears about and jumped out of her bed. She then ran into her parents' room and blew out her trumpet and said, Wake up, mommy and daddy! Today we travel to India. I've been waiting so long for this day to arrive, for I finally get to see my cousin, Pretty Sindra. She jumped and even somersaulted on their bed, making sure she shook them up. And when that didn't work, she brought them hot tea in a big old tin cup. Her mom and dad smiled at one another, then pulled her into the bed. But I don't want to sleep, she started to say. Anita, the flight to India is not till noon. I'm afraid you've woken up a bit too soon, her father said. Anita looked up to the sky to see the smiling sun was quite far from where it usually rests at noon. That made her shrug and wrinkle her little trumpet nose as she sank further into her parents' bed. Couldn't we have taken a flight before noon? She sulked. Sorry, dear, but all flights leaving for India are only after the sun strikes noon, her mother said. But why? Anita wanted to know. Because that's the best time. Think of it, Anita. You'll be in a position to see all the lands and seas we'll be crossing over as we get to India. Her father replied, then added, wouldn't you want to see all that? Anita sighed, then begrudgingly nodded her little head. Good, then just be patient, her mother said. Anita really wished she could. As she lay on her parents' bed, all she could think about was her cousin, Pretty Sindra. The two were very good pen pals. Occasionally, they would send out smoke messages. Anita remembered a message Pretty Sindra sent her one day about an exciting festivity in the streets of India, where the streets were alive with color and dance, and how at night the sky was filled with sparkly fireworks. Anita immediately shot out of bed. Father, please show me the position of India once again. I'd like to know just where we will be staying. She asked. Her father nodded, then got out of bed. He put on his spectacles and pulled out his great big atlas map. As little Anita sat on his mighty lap. Now, this is India, he pointed, then said. Its direction is further east from Kenya, in a continent called Asia. Anita smiled as she imagined of the beautiful sights and sounds she would soon be able to see. Oh, Father, could we please go to the airport now? She pleaded. Oh, please, oh, please, oh, pretty please. She cried out loud. Well, all right, her mother said. Just don't say we didn't warn you about being patient for your flight. Yay! Feeling triumphant, Anita blew her little trumpet, then dashed out of their room. At the airport, she saw big birds flying in carrying passengers and then take off. She eagerly wondered when their turn would arrive so that she could touch and feel the clouds in their great big sky. But soon, Anita fell into a dreamy state of sleep. So sound was she that she didn't hear the pilot stock call out for their trip. When she finally woke up, the elephant family was already in India. But why didn't you wake me up? Anita fumed. I wanted to see the ground we covered from above the skies. 
We tried really hard, but you refused, her father said. Anita felt bad, but learned one thing, and that's the value in being a little more patient, especially when it comes to getting big things. The end. From the story zone, this is Queasy Quiz. What was Anita's cousin called? I've been waiting so long for this day to arrive, for I finally get to see my cousin, Pretty Sindra. Which continent is India in? Now, this is India, he pointed, then said, its direction is further east from Kenya, in a continent called Asia. I really enjoyed that story. Did you enjoy that story? Yeah! Well, but sadly, this is the part where we have to say goodbye. Oh, that's right, Mara, but wait, to our studio guests. Did you have fun today? Yeah! Brilliant. And for you watching us at home, we hope that you had fun as well. So do not forget to join us again next week for more fun. And game. And learning. Now, come on everyone, let's say goodbye. Bye! Bye.